Welcome back, everyone. This is episode three, I believe. God, man, I can't even keep count already. We're only up to three. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to start scripting. And, well, we're going to make two scripts. One for the wheel, one for the motor. And we'll start filling those scripts out to uh, actually make our car start moving the way we want. So let's go ahead. We'll jump down to the scripts folder. Double click it. I'm just going to go into it. I'm going to go ahead and create a C-sharp script. And... I was just going to call it motor, but I'm starting to think maybe car motor. Now nah, let's do motor. Let's not get fancy. And we'll double click it to open it up. Come on, beach ball. You can do it. There we go. All right, well, we'll make that a little bit bigger. And I'm also going to go ahead and make another script here called wheels. Well, wheels are tight. Let's do wheels. All right, we'll double click that, open that one up too. And there we go. Both are the size of a font. You should be able to read pretty good. So I'm gonna start off with the motor. So we'll go over here and let's start off with uh, a few public variables, shall we? Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the tires in this script, but later on I actually wanna move them up to a different script called car. Uh, but for now I'm gonna go ahead and grab them here. I uh, just so we don't have that many scripts to to keep track of and basically try to sort through just simpler if you just keep it down to two scripts so we called it wheel right yeah wheels oh i called it wheels i'll have to rename that singular please uh, an error has occurred okay well whatever we'll go ahead Make sure that one's saved. We'll go ahead and we'll open up motor again. We'll have to type that one line. That's all right. We haven't even finished it. So we could make the, yeah, let's go ahead. We'll make these public. I was going to say, let's keep them um, private. We'll just search for them, but let's, let's go ahead and actually make these ones public. So they're type wheel. We have four of them. Maybe you're making a car that has like six wheels, eight wheels, whatever. We're going to go ahead and just put them in an array. And if I spell wheel right, there we go. So we'll go ahead, we'll save this off, and let's come back to our car. And one thing I wanted to point out here, you notice it's not blue anymore, even if we expand it, it's not blue, and it's orange over here. And what this means is that we've lost our prefab connection to the prefab we've made. So we can either just make another prefab, or just come over here and hit apply, and that'll reassign all the changes back to our prefab. Now we're gonna be out of some scripts, so we'll have to do it again. But just so you know, you should try to keep that blue. So on the very top uh, part, car here, I'm gonna go ahead and just drop motor on there. And then for each wheel, this will be faster. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop the wheel on here. So either way, the great thing is I can just go like this. Or if you prefer the wheel dragging. As you can see, either one works. Okay, uh, next let's go jump into the car again. And we have our array of wheels here. I'm just gonna go ahead and select them, all of them. Oops, we lost the, the editor. We're gonna lock the editor. We come up here, click that little lock. Now we can click all of these, come over and just drag them and drop them right on the wheel. And there we go. Now I want them in a specific order. Instead of making an array, what we could have done is just had four of them here. So we could have went something along the lines of, you know, public wheel, uh, front, left wheel, and, you know, then have like front right wheel, rear left, and basically create a bunch of, of wheels separately that way. Since there's a whole bunch of them, and I know there's going to be times where I just want to iterate through them, I will actually want to keep them as an array. But I do want to keep them in a particular order. And I want to go the front ones, then the back ones. But more importantly, I want it to be left, right, left, right as well. So I am actually going to make a quick note of that. There we go. We'll go ahead and we'll shrink this up. Just a quick little note. And let's go ahead and move on to the wheel script. And for the wheel, 
we click it, we notice it doesn't change. We have to unlock the inspector. So if you ever start clicking around here, whoops, and you can't seem to get it to show what it's supposed to be showing, it's probably because you have it locked. But anyway, I want to get access to this wheel collider. So I'm going to come in here, make it private. Well, if it's if it doesn't say public or protector, or you don't have any sort of accessor in front of a variable, it's always private. So wheel collider, and I'm just going to call it oh, WC. And one important note is that if for some reason we're creating a tire and we don't have a wheel collider on it, we want the script to go ahead and add one. So we can do that simply by creating one line up here that says require component. Now when we attach the script to something, it's automatically going to add whatever required components we put in. But you do have to tell it what type of component you want. So we're going to say a wheel collider. And we'll save this off. And just to demonstrate this, if we were to go ahead and create a, an empty here, nothing on it, and we were to put the wheel collider on it, or the wheel script on it now, you see not only does it get the wheel script, it will automatically add your wheel collider. That way there you know your, your game object that you're playing around with is going to have that uh, component that you want. So when you're playing around here with the wheel collider, you don't have to worry about it not being there. All right, so we got that done. Jump back over to motor. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these functions. We'll, we'll leave update. We're just going to switch it to fixed update. Now, fixed update is used to do all your physics calculations. It's not called every frame. It's called every, I believe they refer to it as a physics frame. So if your game's running at, you know, 120 frames a second, your physics frame, there actually is a setting for it. Let's see if I can quickly find it. Oh, it won't be in mono develop. Uh, is it under physics? Uh, not seeing it. But there is an actual setting somewhere. So let's say it goes off uh, every once every 30 seconds and your game is running at, you know, 30 frames a second. If you were to use update, then it would be calculated every uh, once every 60 seconds. But we don't want that for physics because uh, your frame rate will change, but the fixed update won't. It'll always stay the same. So while we're in here, we're going to go ahead and calculate um, when we're pushing the buttons to move forward in turn. But let's just start off by moving forward. So to do this, we'll go ahead and create a float variable. And let's go ahead and call it torque. And this will be for moving forward and backwards. We'll set this equal to input, maybe, dot get axis. And the axis we're going to be looking for is vertical. Uh, we'll look at that in just a second. Now, spelling does matter. And I'm just going to go ahead and multiply this by some arbitrary number for now. And we'll fix that in a bit. Let's go ahead and we'll look at this input get access thing. What exactly, where is this coming from? So if we come back into Unity, Unity has an input manager built in. And we can get to that going through edit input. And here we go here. It has a bunch of them already set up for us, 18 to be exact. And if we look here, these are the names of them, vertical, horizontal. Right now we're looking at vertical. So if you wanted to change the name, here's where you would change it. But remember that spelling matters and so does capitalization. Uh, you can go ahead and give it a descriptive name, descriptive name for the negative value. Then you can assign a, a neg negative button, which is basically what button do you push to get a negative value. Positive buttons, what button you push to get a positive value. Then you can set up some alternates. Then of course, there's other things you can adjust like gravity, the dead zone, uh, sensitivity, snap, invert. You can, you can read. <laughs> but basically what we're looking at here is what buttons work with uh, the horizontal. So the down and up or the down and up arrows and the alternate buttons for it is S and W. Now I'm personally just going to be using S and W, but if you want to go ahead and use the up and down arrow, they're already assigned for you. If there's other buttons you want to use, you can go ahead and look up the key codes for those and put them there as well. But that's where I'm getting this vertical thing. And if you can't spell, you can just cut and paste. 
So we'll go ahead, save that off. And now we actually want to tell our wheels how much torque we're generating and transfer that to the wheels to get them to move in the proper direction. So I'm going to jump over to the wheel script and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. And I'm going to create a method to actually move the tire in the direction that we want. So we'll have to go ahead and make this public because it will be accessed outside of this script. And it's not going to return anything, so I'm just going to say void. And I'm just going to call it move. And it's going to take a float and I'll call it value. Go ahead, we'll save that there. And inside, we want to start accessing certain properties of the wheel collider. So we're going to say WC dot. And the one we're going to grab right now is the motor torque. And as you can see, we can access the getter and the setter. So we're just going to go ahead and make it equal to the value. Now, I do want to keep Unity's API documentation open. And a quick way to get to it is just go ahead, select one of the properties. And if you're in Mono Develop, you can hit Command and the little uh, comma or the apostrophe, I guess, uh, beside the enter or return key. Or if you're on Windows, use uh, your control key. And then I'll go ahead and open it up. And it'll just give you a list of which ones you're looking at. So we're looking at the wheel collider one. And here we go. I'm actually going to jump into the base wheel collider class. And that way there it gives me access to all of the things I can do with the wheel collider. I'm mostly interested in the wheel collider specific stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag this off to a separate screen. But before we do, we'll just go ahead and we'll take a quick look here. And as you see, you can just assign a certain value to it to, well, give torque to that wheel. So let's go ahead. We'll move this off to the side. And we're going to go ahead and jump into our motor script again. And I'm going to come back down to my fixed update. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that, um, that torque that we're generating to our, our wheel. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply them. Well, you can apply them in different ways. Uh, depending how you're setting your vehicle up, you might wanna have front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, maybe all wheel drive, or in some places they call it four wheel drive. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and set up um, front wheel drive. And I'll make a note of that. And we'll go ahead. This is where I set my wheels up in a specific way. So I know zero. And I'm gonna call move. And I'll pass in torque. Just go ahead and copy this. Well, and there we go. If we pass it into the first two variables, or the first two elements in the array, and we'll look at car. These are the front wheels. And of course, we have the rear wheels as well. So if we wanted to do rear wheel drive, we could just access the third and fourth. And if we wanted all wheel drive, we can just do all of them. But I just want front wheel drive for now. So I'm going to comment those out, but I am going to leave them there because later on we would like to set a system up where we could have uh, differences like that. And let's go ahead, we'll save it and jump back into Unity. Make sure wheel is saved. And let's hit play. Oh, what do we got here? It is never assigned to and has a default value of null. All right, so we got to go ahead and grab that. So I'm going to do it in awake. I generally like to do all of my referencing inside of awake instead of start. You can do it inside of start too, but the main thing you got to pay attention to is that the order in which these methods are called. So it's awake, start, and then update. So if you want to access something in different stages you'll want to put them in different uh i guess tiers of what they're being called in awake is first so before i do anything i want to make sure i have a reference reference to it or a reference <laughs> that last you with a reference so i'm going to say wc is equal to uh, we're just going to go ahead and get the component and the component we want is a wheel collider and uh, we know it's going to have one because we told it that it requires one so we'll go ahead, we'll grab that. Uh, I like to have three spaces in between my methods or functions. And we'll come back, we'll go into here, this should disappear for me. And there we go, let's go ahead, we'll try it out. Hit start. And let's go forward. There we go. Woo! Now, 
course, if we hold S to go backwards, it would be nice to kind of see what these values are. And we've got quite a bit of tweaking to get the car to start moving the way we want. But the really cool thing is that we're actually using the engine. We're going to have it generate actual torque for us. And we're going to transfer that torque to the actual wheel. So it works really cool like a car does. But we've got the basics down. Now we just got to fine tune it. But I like to keep these short. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that in the next video. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. And I'll see you later. Vroom, vroom. Ha <laughs> ha.